it is just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Dr. Usa Banag. She is the recipient of the American Dental Association Humanitarian of the Year Award for 2017. That is such an amazing accomplishment. Congratulations on that. That is amazing. Dr. Banag is a general dentist with extensive training in comprehensive dental care, including restorative and cosmetic dentistry, periodontics, endo, ortho, implant surgery, temporomandibular disorders, Botox and fillers, Cerec crowns, sleep apnea, Invisalign, and clear correct. She continues to expand her horizons through extensive continuing dental education and seeks the best practice and treatments for her patients so they can obtain optimal dental health. Dr. Benog is a fellow of the American College of Dentists, International College of Dentists, and the Pierre Fichard Academy. She is also a member of the American Dental Association, the Academy of General Dentistry, the International Association of Orthodontics, the American Association of Sleep Dental Medicine, CIRAG Doctors, and the Dawson Academy. Before becoming a dentist, Dr. Benog was a certified dental assistant. After completing her prerequisite classes at Montgomery College, she went on to Howard University, which was named after Howard Ferran and graduated with <laughs> distinction in 1994. In 1996, Dr. Benog founded her comprehensive dental practice in Bethesda, Maryland. Just recently, Dr. Benog purchased another dental office in Four Corners, Maryland. She is currently working in both offices. Aside from her dental career, Dr. Benog is also the president and founder of Smiles on Wings, Inc., a nonprofit organization that provides humanitarian aid in Thailand. Since its founding, Smiles on Wings has provided dental care to thousands of children and villagers in Thailand. The organization was involved extensively in the 2004 tsunami relief effort. In 2009, the American Dental Association awarded a grant of $70,000 for Smiles on Wings to set up a dental program in southern Thailand to provide dental care for those that were affected by the 2004 Southeast Asian tsunami. To date, with grants and donations from our generous donors, Smiles on Wings continues to provide extensive help with a mobile dental clinic in Northern Thailand, a permanent dental clinic in Southern Thailand, and a scholarship program to send young at-risk tribal girls to college and to return to their communities to make a difference. Smiles on Wings has graduated four young ladies from remote villages in Northern Thailand and currently has eight more students under the program. You can read more about this at smilesonwings.org. Dr. Benog is also known locally for her philanthropic endeavors and received awards from numerous organizations in Montgomery County and the state of Maryland. She volunteered to provide urgent dental care for the Hurricane Katrina victims that relocated in Montgomery County after the storm. She also volunteered in New Orleans with Mission of Mercy to provide dental care for the residents after Hurricane Katrina. After Hurricane Sandy, Dr. Benog and her Smiles on Wing team also delivered items and necessities to victims of the hurricane in New Jersey and Staten Island. Dr. Benog is a native of Thailand. She came to the United States when she was 14 years old. She has two grown children and is a caregiver for her husband who suffered a massive stroke in 2009. She is an avid gardener, a self-taught watercolor artist, a mindfulness meditation coach, and a dog lover. Gosh darn woman, do you ever sleep? <laughs> I, I do, do actually. <laughs> I do, you know, I do. I mean, I, you know, people ask me that all the time, you know, um, do I sleep? I, you know, I do sleep, but, you know, you, um, um, I guess I'm just, you know, just very OCD and very compulsive, but just like, you know, just like all the most dentists, you know, but I'm, I'm lucky that I have um, great teams of people to help me in all these different aspects that I'm doing. So it's not a one person job, you know, everything that I do in my life, you know, I have, you know, great teams, you know, to help me, you know, so, my, you so know, talk us through, how did you find out you won the humanitarian of the year award? Was it a phone call a letter? How uh, did you it was find a, out? It was the phone call from the, um, uh, from the president of the ADA and, um, you know, and actually I, you know, I received a, um, I received a, an email and then, you know, and then the, um, the phone call. So, um, that was very, um, you know, to me, it's a great honor to be able to, re you know, to receive the award and to be the first woman to receive the award as well. So that's, you know, that makes, you know, um, um, I'm just very proud and it's a privilege to, you know, to be recognized for the work that I do. And wow, so you're the first <laughs> woman too. Yes, I am. 
Well, I, I, I did, I did not realize that in the award. Well, double congratulations. Then. <laughs> well, well, thank you, thank you. So you, you got out of school in two thousand eight, and uh, I got out of school in nineteen eighty seven. It really has rapidly gone from a male profession to a female profession. Yes, when I um I went uh, you know I graduated in 1994 and during that time you know at Howard University and um the school um, in my class there were um you know it's 50 percent 50 50 you know 50 percent um, males and 50 percent females so that was the I think the start and then you know I went to dental school with you know with two children two babies so that's also you know I think it's you know another trend that is happening right now is you see more and more women with children you know i'm um, going back to school you know um i'm continuing on with you know higher education so i was you know i, I was very um you know i'm proud to be able to to carry out that uh, to be able to achieve my um you know my dream of becoming a dentist while um, um i was raising two children um, now you're from Thailand. Is in Thailand is our dentists mostly male or female, or is it fifty fifty? No, mostly female. Mostly female. Mostly females. What What about the, your other Asian neighbors? Um, Cambodia, Malaysia, Vietnam, China. What would you say? I think it's the same. I think it's about the same. It's mostly females, and um, you know, for dentists, and um, but I think now, you know, um, uh. I do see the trend, you know, the trend in Thailand is that I do see, you know, more males, you know, I'm, you know, I'm going into dentistry and, um, you know, so that's something that I think it's a um, equal opportunity in, uh, you know, well, for, you know for what both. My, what my bias is, and maybe I'm a jaded person, maybe, maybe, maybe I need an attitude adjustment, but to me, it seems like in every country I've been to, if there's money in the profession, it's all filled with men. And if there's no money in it, it's all women. Like, like for instance, in America, teaching. Teachers are almost all female because mm -hmm. they're the, the bottom pay grade. And when I go to countries where there's no money in dentistry, it's all these lovely women who are doing it because it needs to be done and someone's got to take care of these people. And then you say, we're all the, we're all the men. Oh, they're all in the military or selling cars. or It seems like the men go where the money is and the women go where they have passion and calling and where their heart is. I, Do you, you agree know, I, or is that a I bad agree. statement? I, no, no, no. I, I agree with you. I think it's the, um, uh, you know, I think it's the, um, uh, the maternal instinct in us that, you know, that we, um, you know, that we have in Thailand, you know, I, you know, my, my aunt was a nurse and, um, you know, in, uh, you know, in Thailand, you have, you know, uh, most of my teachers were, um, women, and you know, I had maybe two male teachers. Now, you know, the um, even when I go to visit some of the villages in, you know, um, the the, um, the remote villages in Thailand, most of the teachers are, you know, are you know are females, and you know, most of the dentists are also you know females. So we, you know, I think it's the passion, you know, of giving that we, you know, that we have. And, Not I, and, I, and I guarantee us, as soon as the um, GDP of that country. Uh, passes uh, thirty-five thousand dollars median household income per household. It'll it'll all be men applying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, that's just all I've seen. Men, men are. I believe men are a different beast than women. Uh, good or bad, they just are. But whenever you say that, you're always called a sexist. Like if I said that you had maternal instincts, oh my god, I would get thrown <laughs> off the bus. Uh, but you can say it because it's you're a woman and it's true. But I, I believe men are more motivated by money than women. I'm motivated I'm, by money too, but, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's yes. good or bad. And you can't generalize. You can't say mm -hmm. all men are this or all you know. Like I'm 100% mm -hmm. Irish, and you can't say all Irish are drunks because only 38% are. Uh, you know, uh, you know, 62% just drink a lot but are not drunks. But uh, so yeah, but but I do see that. So why did the ADA give you the Humanitarian of the Year award? Um. Well, because you know, um, th I is received it more, the award. Is it more like all the things you've done over a lifetime, or was it a specific event? It has to be more than ten years, and it has to be sustainable. You know, the work that I do, it has to be sustainable. Then it has to be able to, um, you know, um, there, you know, there are results. You know, it's a, you know, um, that is, um, uh, what is it? Um, 
it's long-term success and um, you know the requirement is for ten, you know over 10 years so it's I think it's a lifetime you know I started it in 2003 so that's been 14 years that I've been doing it and it's um, it's being able to um, you know to um, but it's the sustainability I think is the important of what we Absolutely. you know what we do and and talk about that because because a lot of humanitarian charitable missionary dentistry you know it's kind of like They'll, they'll, they'll find some really poor remote area and they'll all dive in there with all this fancy stuff and do all this dentistry. And then three days later, they disappear. And that's really not a solution. As opposed to, um, you know, I was taught missionary dentistry by Jerome Smith and, you know, he went down there and the first thing he did is, well, who's the local dentist who's going to be here year round? And let's adopt that guy. And when we're down there, let's teach him how to do stuff. And then let's get connected with him via email. So... I can go to Patterson or Shine or Benco and get a bunch of expired supplies, but sustainability is everything. And these dentists would do more good by thinking about sustainability than how many people they can treat on a four day trip to some poor village. I mean, I think that's what, you know, I mean, in the beginning when I started out doing the work, you know, I, I wanted to go in, you know, just like anybody else. You're going in and do the mission dentistry. You want to um, make a difference in the time that you're there. You know, the four days were working. But as I go back, you know, I, you know, I, um, you know, I, I see that, you know, you can't just teach, you know, one, you know, uh, someone to, um, uh, you know, to brush their teeth when the village has no water. You have, what do you need to do to make that, you know, happen? And, you know, the children, you know, again, you know, they don't have, you know, parents don't have the money to buy toothbrushes or toothpaste. And, you know, so you kind of have to just look at what you can do to continue to make a difference. And it, it's very difficult, you know, when you want to try to do something, um, you know, and have a goal of um, sustainability because you have to also, you know, have the local, you know, team to, um, you know, local person to help you make that happen as well. So I was lucky that I found, you know, the the right, you know, um, uh, people to help me, you know, being able to carry out my, you know, my vision, you know, as well. So, you know, I can work from America and then, um, you know, and then, uh, you know, the, the clinic, you know, so we, you know, we build a clinic in Southern Thailand that is, you know, um, being used all year round. And when we're not there, you know, the local dentist will, um, and local dental hygienists will provide the care for the, um, you know, for the children. And, um, you know, you going in to, you know, to work, you go in, you do, you know, a hundred extractions, you know, a hundred fillings, you know, a hundred, you know, you see a hundred children, but that's just one time, but you need to just make sure that you are able to continue, you know, the care, you know, my, you know, um, the, the, the philosophy that I use is it's the same as when I, you know, when I see children under Medicaid program in, you know, in the state of Maryland, you know, in uh, in my um, community, because, you know, I, um, you know, a lot of, you know, I started out, you know, seeing Medicaid children under a loan repayment program with the state of Maryland. And a lot of these children that they, you know, they came to me, they have, you know, they have, you know, they had, you know, big cavities, um, teeth needing extraction, and, um, you know, I can, you know, I could provide the emergency care, but for me to help them, um, you know, sustain, you know, uh, obtain, you know, uh, long-term oral health, I have to make sure that I continue seeing these children on a, you know, every six months, like we see our patients. And, you know, I, you know, I've been doing this for more than 15 years, and I'm happy to say that a lot of these children are you know, they now have, you know, healthy smile. And that's something that, you know, I use the same philosophy when I, you know, work with um, Smiles on Wings. So we end up, you know, working with just, you know, um, uh, uh, staying in um, the local area, one village, you know, one town that we can, you know, continue to make a difference. And, you know, in, um, in the 14 years that we are doing, we have been doing this, you know, the most important thing is, you know, now we have graduated um, a nurse, teacher, and health professional, you know, health officers that are now able to go back to the communities that we had served in the past, and they are the one who are providing the care for the, um, for the villagers, you know, for their communities. And I think, to me, empower, you know, th the empowerment that I can give to 
um, you know, to the new providers, you know, that's so important. You know, like right now, we also have, you know, nine more students in, um, in our scholarship program. My gosh, what a lovely website. So if one of my homies is listening to you talk right now and wants to get involved, um, should they go to smilesonwings.org and what can they do? Uh, they can, right now, the, we, you know, we are in the process of reorganizing our, you know, our mission. And, um, you know, normally we would be doing our dental mission twice a year in January and in July. However, because of there are some changes in the, um, in the, um, uh, what is it, the rules and regulations in Thailand, we have to um, go back and revisit what we can and what we can't do. So right now, you know, they can send us the email at smilesonwings um, uh, at gmail dot at gmail.com, then we, you know, our administrative director will be sending them the information and um, you know, and we'll keep them informed. Is it because of, Thailand didn't want un they wanted to make sure the people coming into dentistry were licensed or was it uh were they worried that people would come in there that weren't dentist or what, what um, did I Thailand think, change the regulation? I think it's the licensing issue, you know, just like anywhere else. And I think it's because Thailand is becoming, you know, more developed and, um, you know, and the countries, the, the country is now, um, you know, looking to make sure that they have some regulation um, to prevent, you know, um, uh, any, you know, someone else coming in to do dentistry. Uh, you know, without a license. So technically, when we we you know we used to be able to go to work and ha and work under the um, the supervisions of the local dentist. Now it's um, you know we have to just go back and revisit of what we can and we can't do. And um, you know, but um, we still have the local Thai dentists you know doing the work. And at this point, we are not um, you know we're still waiting to see you know um, what would be the next step. And I am uh, I'm going back you know, to Thailand in January, and I will, you know, uh, revisit, you know, have some meetings and figuring out what the next, you know, the next step for us. So do, are you able to fly a nonstop? You're in Bethesda. What, what do you do? Go to uh, Washington, uh, but Washington, D.C.? or New Yes. York City? Uh -huh. And do you no, go nonstop uh, uh, to Bangkok? Oh, no, no. Um, D.C. to either Japan or Korea, you know, and then from Korea to, um, you know, to either to Chiang Mai or Bangkok or Phuket. So, so there's no nonstop know. flights from uh, no it, n really um, New York you know. City doesn't even uh, n um, you know Thai um, Airway used to have a nonstop flight to New York you know from uh, from New York City and that's like 19 hours but I still have to go to um you know to New York so the connecting flight is not all that you know that great yeah. it's you know you get used you know after you fly so, so you know, how do you thing. justify living in Bethesda Maryland instead of Bangkok I mean who I mean, you you can't go from Bangkok to Bethesda, Maryland. I mean, weren't you going the wrong direction? I mean, that is one rocking hot town. Uh, you know, Bangkok or just, uh, you know, well, you know, Bethesda to Bangkok. It's, you know, I mean, I really, I didn't grow up in Bangkok. So I'm not really, a, you know, I'm not a Bangkok. You're a, you're you know, a country you know. girl. I'm a country girl. You know, I'm a country girl. How far mm -hmm. away from Bangkok did you grow up? Um, it's, um, it's actually near the bo border of Cambodia. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's like about, uh, 12 hours by train. <laughs> so oh, Bangkok is 12 hours. No, from me, uh, no, from me, you know, from my, you know, my town, you know, oh, okay. I, I grew up in Ubon. I know, just but lectured Bangkok in Cambodia and it was, um, uh, it was so amazing, but I have to tell you something very bizarre about Cambodia. Um, when I talked to Dennis that were my age, 54, they uh -huh. were so traumatized from the Khmer Rouge, you could mm -hmm. tell they were almost dead inside. Mm -hmm. And then their children, who were dentists the age of my kids, they were all vibrant and love life. And sometimes I'd pull a kid to the side and say, you know, what, what's, what's wrong with your dad? He doesn't seem to be, you know, peppy or something going on. He goes, the Khmer Rouge killed his wife, his mom, his dad, his sisters. And, and I, it, it, you, it's a point where... You kind of live through so much trauma in, in, uh, in the killing fields that it's it's hard to get happy again, isn't it? It's I you know I you know I, I mean I know I mean how can you you know how can you um, you know what is it um, recuperate for something like that you know from something like that it's very difficult you know I grew up in um, um, in Ubon it used to be um, an air base for the um, you know during the Vietnam War. And, you know, even though I don't get, you know, I didn't get to, um, 
you know, to experience war firsthanded. But I, you know, I, I hear the, 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 the B-52, you know, the Phantom, you know, the planes, you know, going and dropping bombs, you know, and come back. And, you know, and it's, you know, you, you get to, you know, to feel, you know, that sense of war that's, you know, was happening. And then when you, you know, when you, you know, when I heard about the killing field, that was, you know, I mean, it was really, you know, um, it can be traumatic. I just don't know how people survive, you know, that kind of, you know, experience, you know, and you, you know, you know, they lost, you know, people that they love. And, you know, how many people, what was the total population when the Khmer Rouge took and then how many were killed? I mean, it was, it was like, millions you know yeah, it, was it was in the millions, millions of people and 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 it, and it was the the you know the the educated you know i mean it's like you know they wipe out the you know the educated you know uh, uh, people of you know of cambodia and, so and that, i didn't i didn't meet a single 50 year old dentist my age that wasn't just so much pain inside oh my gosh you know it, i mean it's, not not uh, one so i sorry I, I shouldn't have gotten from your beautiful humanitarian award but I did, you know, you did grow up on the border of Cambodia, and I thought that was very profound. And, and um, so you, um, a lot of people will say to you today that, um, that you know, that dentistry has been taken over by corporate dentistry, PPOs. You know, um, Delta is really, has 95% of the dentists have signed up, and it's really a PPO. I mean, they're setting your fees, and, and people are saying, that, you know, like, like when I got out of school 30 years ago, Delta paid me a thousand for a crown and a thousand for a molar root canal. Now they pay me six hundred for a crown, six hundred for a root canal. There's corporate dentistry on every corner. Do you think? Um, how? What, what's your advice to, uh, as a female role model to young women dentists coming out of school? Is it still the glory days for dentistry? Can she still go up and set up her own practice, or do you think she'll be working at a corporate chain the rest of her life? Well, that that's a tough, you know, a tough uh, um, answer to, you know, to give. I think, you know, when I, um, you know, for the new dentist coming out, I know it's, you know, it's difficult because even for me, um, it, you know, I had the experience, you know, of um, a year and a half ago, you know, buying a new, uh, um, another dental practice. And it's an older practice that, um, you know, I had to do an upgrade in everything, you know, digital x-ray, um, uh, I, um, you know, uh, what computers, you know, adding computers into the, you know, the system and the, um, you know, and I'm a CEREC user. So I have been using CEREC for the last, you know, 10 years. So I really didn't want to practice, you know, without CEREC. So I added a CEREC into the, you know, the repertoire and, you know, you're looking at spending hundreds and thousands of dollars on top of the, the price of the, um, of the practice. And I'm looking at, you know, uh, like if this was a, um, a a new dentist coming out with all these loans that they have to pay, how can you start a, you know, a practice without, you know, um, um, without worrying about money? And, um, you know, to me, I think it's, um, you know, it, it's a it, it's a difficult time to start a practice, but the, you, you can. However, I think the, you know, like you said, corporate dentistry is taking over, um, but I think you can, I can have a mini corporation, you know, meaning doing, I can have, you know, um, um, you know, another, you know, have a multiple offices that I can provide, you know, um, the, um, um, an ideal office for a new graduate to come in and work. And then we can, you know, um, you know, work on not having to sign up with all the insurances. You know, so it's a, you know, it, um, you know, it's a difficult time, you know, I think, you know, for, you know, with, you know, with insurances, with um, the technology for you to be able to, you know, to provide, you know, um, what is it, the, um, the care for your, you know, your patients. Now you can't, you have to spend the money to, you know, reinvest in, in the, um, you know, in the office because you can't just start, you know, when I started out my first dental practice, I spent less than $50,000 <laughs> to, you know, to start my my first office. Here, I'm, you know, I'm spent I had already spent so much money and it seems like I'm spending more and more. And then of course, you know, you need to have that, you need to have this, and I do so many different um, you know, procedures. And again, you have to do it to be able to keep up with, you know, and to be able to provide for your patients. So, you know, I, you know, the, the expense, uh, you know, supplies, you know, is, you know, you know, it's, it's really expensive. And, you know, that's all, like, you know, that's all we do, you know, is, you know, spending money for supplies. And of course, 
you don't sell, they don't sell things in smaller amount. You have to buy it in bulk and then they expire <laughs> and you end up having to throw things away or I take to Thailand. But I think the, um, for the new, you know, for the new graduate, I think it's difficult, you know, because of the loan, you know, I understand is what about what, $200,000, $300,000 now. Oh, you know, some, to, um, some in the private schools are up to 500,000. In fact, that's what I wanted to have you do is expand your Smiles on Wings program to where if you have over $300,000 in debt, you would fly them to Bangkok and give them a Thailand license and then they'd <laughs> they never have to pay their student loans back. They, they'd oh, be my missing. gosh. What do you think about that? <laughs> wouldn't, they they wouldn't could that change be great? their name and everything. Wouldn't that be great? But I don't think the Thai Dental Council would agree with that. I, I we just could call don't it think the they... Dental Witness Protection Program. <laughs> They just change your name and fly him straight to Bangkok. Oh my gosh, when I when I you know after I graduated from school you know uh, 23 years ago you know my loan was under fifty thousand dollars and I thought that was hard to try to pay back and that was difficult and then again I started my practice so you know struggling to do that that's you know th that's difficult I think you know I mean from you know I think. If I, let's say, if, um, let's say right now, if I, you know, if I were the graduate, I think a new graduate, I think what I would do is to maybe go into partnership with another, you know, another, um, you know, a dentist, you know, maybe two, three dentists, and you can really, um, you know, share the expenses and then, um, you know, and share the office and be able to buy you know, expensive, you know, equipment. You're looking at, you need to have the CT scan, now, if you're doing implants, you know, and you need to have the, um, you know, CEREC or other, um, you know, other um, digital camera to be able to, you know, do, you know, different procedures. So I think it's, you know, it's probably better to go into partnership with someone else. And you know what and I think would be the better partnership also? We were talking earlier about uh, your class size was 50-50 women. You were the first woman dentist to get the humanitarian award. Um, you know, a lot of you, I want you to talk about CEREC because a lot of people... Um, say that CEREC is great marketing for same-day crowns. But I have to tell you, in Phoenix, Arizona, for 30 years, if I tell someone they need a crown, half go into fear. Oh, my God, are you going to give me a shot? Is this going to hurt? The other half go into fear of cost. Oh, my God, how much is this going to cost? I only have about one person a decade who says, I really want it. The, my main concern is the same day. And so if I was going to partner, if I was a woman dentist, I'd want to partner with other women dentists because I totally believe the market thinks women are going to hurt you less than men. We saw it happen in OBGYN. When I was little, they were all men. Now they're all women. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, pediatric dentistry is following that suit. Many of these pediatric dentistry programs that I've lectured in their school, there's not one man in the entire program. And when you ask moms, uh, who do you think's going to listen? Who's going to, who do you think is going to be easier on your little Johnny and little Millie? I mean, who, who, who do they think it's going to be? A man pediatric dentist that looks like me or a woman who looks like you? Um, who are the women more comfortable to ask questions to? You? I mean, the, the women are telling me this with pediatricians that maybe they have concerns about vaccinations, okay? And maybe they're confused. But they feel like if they go ask the man pediatrician, he's just going to bark like, rah, 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 rah. But, if, if, but if she said those concerns to you, you would listen to her, you'd validate to her, you'd talk it out. So I, if I was a woman dentist and I wanted to split the cost of a CBCT and a, um, a CAT scan and a CERAC and a laser and all that stuff, I'd partner with another woman. I, I'd have it all women dentists. I've seen it done where their logo is like a rose or we're soft and gentle, we'll never hurt you. <laughs> because I think that's half the market. I think it's half fear and half cost. What do you, what do you think about that? Uh, am I going to get in trouble if I say something that it's... Hell, <laughs> no, no I... this is dentistry uncensored. In fact, please use profanity. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, I don't, you know, I don't use profanity that much. But I, you know, I, I mean, I think, you know, for me, I'm just going to speak about my own experience. I think if I were to go, you know, if I were to open my third office, you know, um, Howard, I probably would, you know, partner with another, you know, another woman. I think that would be my, um, you know, I think it's because I think maybe it's just the way, you know, we share the same, you know, the the understanding, uh, you know, the what is it, the, um, you know, a, a lot of 
you know, there we're moms, you know, we have, um, ch you know, children, even though my children are grown, but, you know, I'm going to have grandchildren, you know, in the future. I, we, I want to be able to have the, um, the flexibility that, you know, I'm, uh, I'm going to be with someone who will understand that, you know, uh, if my, uh, you know, I mean, I'm a caretaker for my husband. So, you know, if he gets sick, I, you know, I want someone to understand that they can, you know, come in and cover me and I have to take time off to take care of my husband. And, you know, I used to have associates, you know, that would come into my practice that had, you know, um, um, uh, small children. You know, they, you know, I know that there will be time that, you know, children will get sick and we have to be flexible in, you know, rearranging the schedule and um, allowing, you know, um, you know, her to go pick up, you know, her children and, you know, last minute changes. So I think that's something that I don't know, you know, um, you know, I, um, you know, I've been, I, you know, I, th I think, you know, do you agree that I think women would understand each other more than more than the men will do. I mean, I'm, you know, I, I think to me, I, I want to be flexible for my staff as well. And I, so I, you know, it's important for me to, you know, to have someone that will, will be able to understand what I am going through. In, well, you know, I mean, in, we, I mean, there is, there are some hardcore facts that the different, that women and men have to acknowledge and whether um, one, one is that women um, and all apes and monkeys uh, talk five times as much as men. <laughs> I mean, that, that's a given. I mean, women are north of 7,500 words a day, and men are south of 1,500 words every time they do the study. And it's the same with uh, gorillas, chimpanzees, orangutans, bonobos. So I think when you make five times as many words, that's five times as more quality communication. Like a lot of young women dentists will say that they were an associate for a male, and he'd just bark all these orders, and the staff would all do it, and... and and then she bought the practice, then she'd bark the order, then they'd all talk to her. And she almost thought that was an insult, like, well, you're just supposed to take the order and run. And I'm like, it's a compliment. They didn't feel safe talking or trying to communicate with the 70-year-old guy they bought it from. He was incapable of communication. I, I, think, I think moms want to go to women because you talk more, which is communication. I think staff are happier with you guys because you, you, just, you just communicate more. Uh, but, I want, and I, but I want to ask another question. Your husband suffered a massive stroke in 2009. You've been taking care of him for eight years. Half the marriages in the world fail. I just think that, I mean, talk about humanitarian. So many people, when their spouse gets sick or whatever, they, they move on. Um, good, at, good at you for taking care of your husband eight years after a stroke. Where, where did that come from? Just um, it's, I, I guess that's just me. I mean, it's me, you know, I, you know, I, I practice loving and kindness. I, you know, my, you know, I think it's in my, um, uh, that's why I am, you know, a humanitarian. That's why I do what I do. And it's because it's, you know, it's important, you know, actually my husband sent me to school. <laughs> He he supported me, you know, through dental school. So I I can't abandon him. You know, he's um, you know, we you know we work you know we work together. You know, when I um you know when I was working as a dental assistant, and um when I told him that I wanted to go to dental to go you know to dental hygiene school in the beginning, he just said, why don't you go to you know to dental school? You know, do it all the way because he knows that I, you know, I'm smart and I'm you know I was capable to you know to make it happen. So you know we um you know he was um he helped me you know take care of the children. He um you know I would study late and he would be with the children. And when I um, when I graduated from school and I um, you know I started the practice, he um, you know he came to work with me and you know and then go home. He went home to take care of the children to pick up you know to pick up the children after school, and you know it allowed me to be able to be the breadwinner of the family and and able to you know to uh, to start my business, start my practice. So it's, um, you know, when something like that happened, you just don't abandon, you know, you know, you just don't abandon, you know, that person. But do you think some of that came from your roots? I mean, Thailand, my, my memories of Thailand, they're all Buddhist. Was, was this, was, were you raised Buddhist or Hindu? I am, you know, I, I'm a Buddhist and I'm, I'm a practicing Buddhist because, you know, that's part of my, you know, my fullness, you know, um, I meditation love training. because they worship a fat, bald guy. <laughs> Anybody, any religion that... Any religion that worships a happy, fat, bald guy, I really like. 
that's that that's more of a Chinese, you know, uh, Buddhism <laughs> than uh, than than Thai Buddhism. But anyway, I um, I you know, it, I don't think it matters. If, you know, if you're a Buddhist, you're Christians. I think it just have to be in your heart. You know, it's who you are. Is how you were brought up. Is what is in you know what is in you that is so important. It doesn't matter you know whether you you know you are a Christian, you know Hindu, you know Islam's, you know whatever. I think it's you know I you know it, it's just been um, you know in mind you know in my thought that I you know I would not have you know abandoned him. You know how, what's what kind of an example I would teach my my boys if I do that. You know. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. You're a beautiful person. Um, I want you to spend more time. You you said you bought a Cirac ten years ago. A lot mm-hmm. of people are very stressed about a Cirac because it's expensive. So you know, um, digital X-rays. You know that that's adopted by eighty ninety percent of uh, dentistry. Computers eighty ninety percent adoption rate. But Cirac, I'm I'm only counting probably about fifteen percent adoption rate, and because it's so darn expensive. So walking through, why would, would did you make that purchase? Why was the you know, the price uh, not a problem for you? Walk, walk him through this, this your love and passion for Cerac. Well, I eat, um, I started out buying the Cerac when it was the Red Cam, and you know we, <laughs> there, there was a lot of problems with the Red Cam. And then you know, and um, you know, so I stuck with it. You know, I was frustrated. I was gonna, you know, I, I, I bang on it so many times. <laughs> I call my Patterson rep so many times. I, you know, I, it, it was frustrating. And then the blue cam came along. So that was, you know, that was an improvement. And, um, you know, so I upgraded it and then, you know, the software has changed. And, um, you know, but now with the Omnicam and, um, you know, I, I just have to say, I would not practice without, you know, without a Sarek. That's why it was so important for me to buy the Sarek for my second practice. I, um, you know, without, you know, without the Sarek, I would not be able to go to Thailand to do my, you know, my humanitarian work. You know, last, um, uh, last uh, December, I was leaving for Thailand in January. Last December, I, um, I started a case for, um, for a patient, a veneer, you know, a set of veneers, upper and lower, um, from number five to number thirteen, number twelve, and then number um, six, number twenty-two to number twenty-seven. I started that to finish. You know, I didn't finish it in one setting, but I was able to, to you know, to prep, to scan, to deliver the case before I, you know, before I left for Thailand. And that has been very significant in, um, you know, in, 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 in taking care of my husband as well. I was able to get the patient in in one appointment in two hours. You know, I will finish the crown, number three, number, you know, four, number five, whatever that I'm doing within two hours. And then, um, you know, and I'm done. And before I bought my second practice, I was working three days a week so I could take care of my husband. And that had allowed me to be able to have the same productions and not having to worry about getting the patient back, setting up the room again, having the, you know, getting the patient numb. And, uh, you know, uh, the first appointment, then you have to make the temporary, so you have to take the impression. And, uh, you know, you have to... um, uh, you know, a temporary will come off and then you get the patient in. You, you know, before the Sarah, I would go to Thailand and I would worry that if I, you know, I, you know, obviously I want to, you know, to start, you know, I want to make money before I leave. So I, you know, I start cases and then I would worry if my, the temps, you know, will come off and then I have to work, you know, have the patient go in to, you know, get someone to cover my emergencies. So, you know, with the Sarah, that eliminated that. And I was able to, you know, to, to, you know, to take care of the patients. You know, um, I would have a patient flying in from New York, or you know, take the bus in from New York. You know, one Saturday morning, and then she would leave. You know, by, um, you know, by two o'clock with four crowns. You know, and that's something that to me, I think that's a service. And um, uh, as far as the. Um, uh, what is it? The at the time, you know, management. I think it it really makes a big difference, you know, for you know for the practice. And I am, you know, uh, sometimes when I do when I place implant, I can, you know, also fabricate the um, the um, the abutment, you know, and you know, and in you know 
insert it next time, but I can, you know, I can have all of that. So I don't use a lot of, you know, impression material. You know, I'm, I'm very savvy in CEREC. I think, um, you know, I, uh, I use it, I utilize it every day, you know, doing anteriors, doing abutments, doing, um, doing implant crowns, you know, screw retain, cement retain, and uh, bridges. You know, now with the, um, with the speed fire, with the zirconia, um, you know, with the CEREC and zirconia, I'm able to put in bridges, you know, for my patients as well. And I think, you know, that's a, um, you know, that's a service. So, do, you know, is it, is it expensive? Of course it is expensive, but I don't pay, you know, I, it eliminates, you know, the, the lab work, you know, the, the, you know, the lab fee. And, um, you know, and I train my staff to, you know, my assistants are helping me to, you know, to get the flow, you know, to make the flow, you know, very efficient. Well, I'll tell you what, if I kicked over a bottle and a genie popped out and she said, you only got one wish, my wish would be that you made an online CE course on that CIRAC machine uh, for Dentaltown because the millennials, you know, there's a quarter million dentists on Dentaltown, but when, we, when they come out with a smartphone, uh, we came out with an app and 50,000 dentists downloaded the app and they were all millennials. So all the old yes. people like me are on the desktop and all the millennials are on that deal. And we've put up 450 courses um, and they've been viewed coming up on a million times that we haven't really done a CAD CAM course. And another one, I, I'm, in, I'm gonna say this since Dentistry and Sensor, you know what our number one complaint is about Dentaltown, the magazine what is that? and the CE? The number one complaint is how come, and, and it's to me too, they say, how come every time uh, you do an article by a, dent, by a dentist, it's a man, and if it's a woman, it's a hygienist or a dental consultant? Uh, why are all your courses made by men? Um, you can ask Ryan. I mean, <laughs> our waiting list to get on this show is very long, but when a woman doctor wants to be on the show, oh my God, we, we move them. But I don't have a good CAD CAM CIRAC machine. The, the millennials are very stressed because it's a lot of money. I mean, a lot. I mean, you could buy a house for one hundred and fifty. Oh yes, <laughs> yes, and absolutely. So, um, so they, so I, I, I really wish you'd make a, a course. And and the guy that's in charge, of, I'm Howard at Dentaltown.com, but the guy in charge of the online CE is Howard Goldstein. So he's Hogo at Dentaltown.com. And you're in Bethesda, Maryland. He's in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. <laughs> but um, I don't know if that's close. But um, I really wish you'd make a, a course on that. because I would love to. And actually, I'm working with Patterson right now to be a, a local trainer for, um, for the Sarah you know, uh, because I, you know, I gained the experience when I bought the second practice and I, you know, my assistant and I were training the, um, you know, the, um, my, um, the former owner to use CEREC. And, you know, we found that we are, you know, pretty good. We make a good team and um, I'm working on it. And if that's something you would like for me to do, it would be an honor for me to, you know, oh, to put together. Oh my gosh, I would love that. <laughs> That'd be so much because it solves several problems. Num number one, you know, they've got to get over the, the, the sticker price. And, and the way they get over the sticker price, they, got, they need to see more information from a real-world person who's really doing it. And I like the fact that you're in Bethesda, Maryland, as opposed to Beverly Hills or Manhattan. You know, because a lot of times when these dentists listen to these courses, you know, they, they quit listening after 10 minutes and say, well, that guy's in Beverly Hills. I, I'm, I'm in Salina, Kansas. That, that's not ever going to happen in Kansas. But Bethesda, Maryland, that, that's... that's I mean that's normal United States. I mean. Yes, uh, no, uh, you know normal United States. Even though the you know we do have you know uh, uh, what is it? It's um, it's uh, one of the richest counties in you know in the U.S. But you know, but I think you know for me most of my patients you know Howard they're just normal people. They're not the you know even though you know down the street there might be a house for you know 1.5 million dollars, but. You know, they're just normal people and they want, you know, they want, you know, uh, what's good for them. And I think that's something that I am, you know, I'm very good at also um, providing comprehensive dental care for the patients and, you know, allowing them to to have a um, an option and a choice of what they want to, you know, what, what they want to see. You know, it's not like, you know, they're going to do, um, you know, extraction and if they're going to do extractions, 
you know, are we going to put in a bridge or are we going to put in an implant? And, you know, uh, I, you know, I work with my, you know, the oral surgeon and we, you know, so many patients that I talk to, you know, it's, um, you know, if you give the patients the, the right information and you educate the patients, they will, you know, they will, they want what is best, even though, you know, if they don't have the, um, you know, enough money, there are care credit you know, that they can, you know, they can look into that as well. So, and then we utilize the insurance, you know, for them. So we, you know, we have a pretty good team. I would love to be able to, um, to talk about, you know, uh, for the new dentists coming out, how to, you know, provide, you know, um, how to incorporate comprehensive dentistry into, you know, into your, um, you know, your daily basis, you know, as well. My office is across the street from the Guadalupe Indian Reservation. And my patients are all millionaires, but it's in pesos, and, uh, <laughs> and they can't they can't buy anything. But uh, I just need to learn how to get them to convert that to the U.S. dollar. Um, yeah. So, uh, so back back to Sirac. There's a lot of technical discussion out there. Um, are you um, milling uh, Emacs um, lithica, um, disil- lithium disilicate or? Are you moving to Bruxer or what? What block are you using? I am. I'm still an Emacs. I'm still an Emacs. You know, a person right now in my. You know, in my first practice, I am. You know, I use Emacs. You know, for everything. And you know, you can have. You know, with Emacs, you can have a millimeter thickness. You know, prep. And um, you know, but it's um, you know, a lot of times when you do the prep. You can, you know, you don't have to do a full crown. So I do three quarter crowns. I do half crowns. I do onlays. You know, I do, um, you know, um, uh, Emacs. You know, I have great results. But, but when you, know. you do inlays, onlays, all that, are you not participating in insurance or PPOs? I mean, what what percent of your I, practice is Delta PPOs? Uh, I uh, the in my Bethesda practice is um, it's. 20% you know, Cigna Giha and the rest is, you know, I don't participate with Delta. I don't participate with, you know, with Blue Cross and Blue Shield. And um, so the patients, you know, again, they understand, you know, they, they'll they come in and we'll submit the claim for the patient. They'll pay. And, you know, so because we don't participate in the um, in any of these plans, so when they pay us, some plans, you know, will we'll pay, you know, 50% of our fee. Our fee is fourteen fifty for a crown. And, um, you know, and that's something that, um, you know, so we do get reimbursed, you know, for that. And then if not, you know, we educate our patients about the, the quality, you know, uh, that, you know, what we provide. And I think that's something it's important as well. My second practice is, you know, is all fee for service. But I will add, you know, once the, um, once the, um, the former owner retires, that will be in six months, I will add um, uh, uh, Cigna and uh, and high end option Giha to you know to the practice as well. We also have in house insurance. You know I think that's something that we um, you know we incorporated in you know in the practice. And actually I I learned it from Lou Graham. I, you know I t- I I um I took a course with him. And I think that's something that I you know I I think it's been a great thing to offer you know my patients you know to be able to have the in house insurance as well. And, do you do um, it yourself, or do you do it through a company? Uh, we do it ourselves. You know, yeah. right now, you know, we, you know, we don't have like you know massive amount of patients, so we just, you know, we're just managing it, you know, everything ourselves, and that seems to be working very well. You know, and I think patients are, you know, they don't postpone their, you know, their regular cleaning, so they will come in every six months, and if they need, you know, perio, if they need something. We can, you know, we can offer our patients and, you know, and they're happy, you know, to have it because a lot of times, you know, they know that, you know, um, um, they know that a lot of times, you know, in trends, you know, you only have maximum of a thousand dollars and, uh, you know, the premium that they pay, you know, so they, you know, they understand the you know, the, what is it, the, the downside of, you know, of insurance is dental insurances. So, you know, so when, you know, when we offer them um, in-house insurance, some of them decided not to sign up with, you know, with, um, you know, their dental insurance at all, you know, because the premium is very high, you know, if they do that. You are amazing on so many levels. I mean, so many levels. I want to, I want to, um, also, are you placing implants? I do, you know, I do. 
I um, I have trained with um, a long time ago when I was a um, a dental assistant. I used to work with a um, a general dentist that was placing implants, and I got to you know to meet Carl Mitch, you know as well. And um, so um, after I graduated from dental school, I worked, you know, with the, uh, with um, with that dentist, and um, you know, and then I I uh, you know I decided to um, you know to to take you know to take um, CE on you know uh, with you know with implant placement, and that was a long time ago. But I you know, and then I studied also with Nobel, you know, BioCare, and um, I also befriended a very good, you know, a top oral surgeon in, um, in, in my hometown in, you know, in, Beth- in, um, in Montgomery County. And every time when he would place an, imp- you know, an implant for my patients, he would invite me to be there See, to observe. so genius. I mean, I tell people, <laughs> I tell millennials that all the time. They say, well, what's a great, you know, which over the shoulder endo should I do? And they, they want to fly to, you know, Santa Monica and Key Biscayne and all. I'm like, Dude, there's an endodontist across the street. When I got out of school, the best endodontist in town was Brad Gettleman. And if I, and if I ever saw a big opening on the deal and said, can I come over and watch you? They always say a course. Same thing with oral surgeons. And, and these, these, these oral surgeons and periodontists are sending you cakes and cookies on Valentine's Day and Easter and Christmas and Hanukkah. They're, they're, they're doing everything they can to be your friend. And then you fly... 3,000 miles away to go listen to a lecture when you got some guy sinking them in your own zip code. So you're just, I, I you're, learned. you're street smart. You're not only book smart, you're street smart. I've, I've learned from them. And then that's how they, you know, and then I, you know, and I said, you know, and, 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 and it's my, um, it was my, the oral surgeon, Dr. Bill Dizak, that said to me, Usa, if you want to do the extraction, if you want to do implant, if you have a problem, you call me. You know, he gave me my, my his cell phone, you know, because he's busy, but he wants us, you know, so he taught me so much, you know, bone grafting and, um, you know, and, and how much did you pay, for, pay to learn all that? Nothing. And, <laughs> I then, sent him. and then do you ever refer him a case though? <laughs> of course. I sent him I difficult cases. <laughs> so see, so half the, spe- the orthodontists are the worst. They're, they're the worst. <laughs> they, they think that the orthodontists have the highest percent of thinking and fear and scarcity. They're like, oh my God. Uh, you're, if, if USA learns how to do Invisalign, I'll go bankrupt. And then I go to cities like in Sydney, where I'm lecturing in Sydney next week, where an orthodontist said, you know what I'm going to do for marketing? I'm going to send out a flyer to all my referring dentists, and the last Thursday of every month, I'm going to have an in-office, teach you how to do Invisalign, bring your cases, I'll walk you through it. So what did, he, so what did they all discover? That he built the biggest orthodontic practice in Sydney. Number two that most dentists, like 80%, after they do ortho for two or three years, they don't like it anymore, and then give him all the cases. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. even if they do all their Invisalign or whatever, they're not going to do the class twos, class threes. But, but same thing with oral surgeons and periodontists. If you think in abundancy, you'll build a million-dollar practice. And if you think yeah. in fear and scarcity, so if you're a young millennial and you go knock on that or, oral surgeon's door and he says, well, I don't want to teach you how to place the implant because – I want you to send it to me. How am I going to feed my family if you do the implants? That guy's an idiot. <laughs> and you just you just eliminated one idiot in your neighborhood that you never have to bother the rest of your life. And then run to the next oral surgeon or periodontist and endodontist and orthodontist. Because if you think in hope, growth, and abundancy, the only thing that matters to you is the patient. And there's yes. enough work for everyone. I, I agree because that's how you know because the you know to be a successful you know general dentist and and um, and being able to do so many different procedures you have to be smart as well you can't just be doing everything so you got to know your limitation and um, you know if something is going to be difficult if I you know I you know I I just said if if it's going to be you know difficult if it's going to be stressful for me then I refer and the two you know I work with two surgeons in the area and you know Dr. Desac he gets you know he he gets referral from me you know from me you know every week even though I you know I still do you know the surgery part and um you know and the other doctor also he taught me you know um you know he he even took me the other doctor Dr. Serini he even took me to um uh, to the um, implant you know conference in Chicago for oral, for oral surgeons and you know that was the best experience because I got to learn you know from did he take you, know, you did he pay for it 
he paid for you know for the course he paid for part of the you know of honest, the, the hotel honest, since he since you're a girl he said you were the assistant uh, no, get, no, get, he, it was it was the doctor. It was it was <laughs> Doctor Usa and my I'm husband. Went, and and he he took my you know my, he you know uh, my husband went you know with me also. So it, it was the best experience because I get to learn you know at, at um with the oral surgeons. You know it was kind of interesting sitting there in a room. You know they were talking about three shape um, you know scanning. And, um, you know, and I was the only, you know, um, GP in there and I had already been using Sarah and I, I knew all, you know, all of that. And yeah, I think that was so dumb. The only course <laughs> I was ever kicked out of was in uh, San Diego because it was a uh, Gary Carr and it's for endodontists only. I thought, well, so I just checked endodontists. He didn't, he didn't find out until the afternoon that me oh, and the buddy I were, were general dentists. But it's like, how fear and scarcity are you? Like, like, like. Like, like the best thing for an American is only the endodontist should have knowledge. I mean, really? I mean, what kind of head injury did you sustain to believe something <laughs> that completely insane? I, I, mean, I have, you know, I, I have a group of, of um, a specialists that I work with. My, you know, the, um, the endodontist that I work with, you know, I, you know, he knows that I do endo. And then if I, I have a question, if I get stuck, I'll get him on the phone. And I said, Dr. Sun. I'm, this is what I'm doing, you know, what else should, you know, and this is, you know, prop, this, this is the problem that I have. What should I do? And, you know, he'll, you know, he'll give me the advice. You just have to get yourself a group of, you know, people that can help you that can, um, you know, you know, have no problems in sharing their knowledge. And I think that's so important. And I think you have to do that earlier on in your career so that you have a, um, you know, you have a um, a backup plan, so you can be, you can, you know, you, you know, you're not just going to do fillings and crowns. You know, you know, being a general dentist is is so rewarding. Don't you find that it's so wonderful to be able and to do all these different things? And the other thing so wonderful things? is that when you get in trouble and you get in over your head, yeah, that, that mm -hmm. guy that and lectured three thousand miles away isn't going to be there. No, you need you to know. be able to put that guy in a car and go to your buddy who's in the same zip code a couple miles up the street. Hey, I've done that. I had a patient that, you know, swallow a crown, you know, and I drove him to Bill Dizak's office and Bill, you know, helped me through all of that. And that's important. And then without even said, I told you not to, you know, <laughs> I told how did, you to how did he weed out uh, that he swallowed versus when the lung? I, I think it's a, I, think I we, we we went. We we took him to the um uh to the um the GI doctor. So we took an X-ray, and then it was in in his you know in his stomach. But you know what? But my pulmonary doctors say that's the craziest thing in the world. They go, if a crown or something went in your lung, you'd be coughing, wheezing, sneezing. I mean, it would be this dramatic reaction when mm -hmm. you swallow something and it doesn't go in your lungs and it goes in your stomach. There's probably no reaction. Like, and then there was, yeah, yeah I had somebody, like, and you like, know. Dude, you drop anything in your lung, you're going to absolutely know. You don't need an x ray to verify mm -hmm. that a crown didn't go in the lung. If there was yes, a lung, you know. absolutely, absolutely but, know it. Yeah, so I just have to do it. But then, you know, it was, you know, so Bill was, uh, you know, was there to help me through. And then if there's something, you know, I mean, I I had, I did extraction and then I, um, the root was fractured and I couldn't retrieve it. And, you know, I sent the patient to Bill and then he, you know, he helped me. So, you know, you have to make mistake to learn from your mistake. And I think that's something that, you know, I mean, you, um, you know, have no fear. You know, you just have to just make sure you have a backup plan. So um, what implant are you placing? Uh, one brand or m many brands? I started out with doing uh, a 3i and then I changed to implant direct and then now I am um, I am going to be using uh, Ritter the new um, you know the Ritter because I think you know I just bought the you know the um, um, the kit so I haven't explored it yet but I'm still you know I, I like using implant direct because it's very easy. And it's um, is it works with my Sarah. It you know I have the tie base. I have the um, um, the scan post and scan body to use it. So I can um, you know I can fabricate the um, the uh, cement uh, the crown retain uh, the screw retain uh, restoration you know for the patient. So that's you know so that's why I'm uh, you know I was using Implant Direct, but I'm going to give Ritter a try and see what will happen. Supposedly it's you know it's an easier um, uh, step. 
So Ritter, the same company that makes Ritter dental chairs? Yes, you know that's. I, I was surprised by that too. <laughs> so I, I got a good deal on the on the the kit. So I'm uh, you know and the implant. So I you know I, I'm going to try it and then see if that will work. Wow! And does when um. Uh, so you started with three I, which is bought by Zimmer. Mm hmm. Then you went with Implants Direct, which was Jerry Riznick. Jerry Riznick. Did you ever hear his one yeah. of his lectures? Yes, and you know, yes, you know, a long yeah. time ago. Yeah. You know, but and, I still. And now you went to Ritter because you like their starter package. Well, it was, um, it was, um, you know, I, I just, I just bought it. I spent what nineteen hundred dollars, and I got ten implants, and I have the surgical kit for free. I'm still not, you know, I'm still using Implant Direct, you know, because it's, um, um, it's still, um, you know, because it's, it's less expensive. You know, three I was very expensive, and um, you know, Implant Direct, you can get the, um, the, um, the whole system for, you know, under two hundred dollars, and it works very well. And, and you know, and uh, another reason that I, you know, I switch, you know, um, from using 3i to Implant Direct is because the surgeons that I, Bill Dizak, was using Implant Direct. So if it's good for the surgeon, then it has to be good for me too. Well, very good, very good. Well, I'll tell you what, I can't believe that was the fast hour. We went three minutes over. That, that was the fastest hour I've ever done. I, I, I could talk to you forever. I really, you really are a role model for me. Um, well, I, thank I, you. I, I mean, between your humanitarian award, taking care of your husband, um, excelling in dentistry, CIRAC, ortho, perio, occlusion, leadership, um, smiles on wings. I mean, my God, they should they should not have given you the ADA humanitarian <laughs> award. They should have given you the ADA everything of the year award. Oh, I'm uh, I'm I'm the jack of all trades. But anyway, I um I if you are serious about the the online course, I will really work on it and look into it. And I, I really would, love would that. like. So I will will keep in touch, you know. And I'll I'll send and I'll the, do. Um, I'll, I will absolutely tell you right now. I will do your um smiles on wings, but only if it's in downtown Bangkok, across the okay. street from the bars. Okay. I want I want you to pull up your mobile clinic, and I'll do dentistry <laughs> during the day and drink all night. Okay. Uh, between their, well, their beer and their music and their uh, car. And Ryan, will you go with me on that trip? Ryan, Ryan's going too. I, I could okay. probably talk at least three of my four boys to go to Bangkok. Okay. I, I will, you know, I will see if that can be, you know, that can be arranged. <laughs> but but uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a, I'm, I'm more of the mountains and uh, rural and remote, you know, um, area of, you know, villagers, you know, uh, you know it, visiting really different nice? villages. Last time I took my boys on a missionary down trip, it was an hour away from Alcapoco. So we got mm -hmm. to stay, fly in Alba, Al, uh, Alcapoco and stay in a five-star resort. Mm -hmm. And then every morning we had like a 50-minute drive up to Adiok. So then mm -hmm. you could do jungle dentistry all day long, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, late, but later that night you could be having, you know, Oh, you, you can do that too. Uh, you know, yeah. our, um, our permanent clinic in southern Thailand is um, it's a block from the beach. Nice. Uh, so, you know, so hopefully that will be something that we can, you know, continue, you know, um, doing. So I, you know, definitely, you know, I'll work on, on getting you to lecture in, um, you know, in Thailand. And I really, you know, the online course for the CEREC, I would love to be able to, you know, to, you well, know, to do that. we would love it more than you. And, uh, and, and we, we would love that. And we also would love to have, you're listening out there, if, you know, we, we would always rather have a course made by a woman dentist than a male dentist because that class, no, I'm serious, that class is half women. I was lecturing at a dental school in New Jersey, this is about two or three years ago. And this little bitty girl walks up to me and she goes, uh, is this your magazine? And it was Dental Town Magazine. I said, yeah, and she goes, yeah, I see the entire editorial board is men. And she flipped the magazine at me and turned around <laughs> oh and walked God. back. And, and I'm so dumb, I pick it up, I look at the deal because I did never even crossed my mind. I mean, I'm thinking dentistry and implants and and all i was thinking gender and i looked at that and so i called my team and they go howard we're aware of that we've been trying so hard you know how hard it is to get a woman on the editorial board because and this is what my team says they say when a man's a dentist um his wife feeds the kid raises the kids all that but when you're a woman dentist it's still kind of sexist and if you're a woman dentist your husband's a male dentist you're still expected to do all the cooking and cleaning and all that and they just said it's very, very hard to find a woman dentist who is a leader, who is all that in a bag of chips, who has any time because she's got to be the domestic kingpin 
along with a professional kingpin, and that is why it's so hard to find women role models and leaders because till their kids are gone, or you know, and the and I've noticed a lot of the ones out there uh, were the ones who didn't have any kids. You know. It's, you know, I, I know it's not an easy thing to do. And then even from, you know, so it, it's a, um, you know, I know, I know we're running out of time, but I just think that, you know, it's um, delegate, you know, delegating, you know, you, you wrote your book, you know, you, you have, you know, you know, the, um, the book that you wrote, I'm, I'm still in the, you know, I'm reading it. And I think that's, you know, so many different things that you talk about, you know, delegating, finding the right people to work for you, delegating your task and, uh, and trusting them to, you know, to, you know, to carry out your mission and your work. So it's the same thing, you know, with my practice, you know, with the two practices, you know, and train them, you know, give them the training. Then I do have, you know, and the same thing at home. I have, you know, someone to help me take care of my husband. And then, of course, you know, I have to to let go. You know, the kitchen doesn't belong to me. <laughs> the house, you know, when she's there, she's, you know, she takes, you know, she takes over. And, and that's important that we have to just learn to let go. And I think that's find, something. Find the best people and get out of their way. Yeah, and that's it. And that's what I do. You know, and, and, and that's, you know, that's so important. I just let them do what they have to do, that they, they, they are capable. And then I can coach them. I can, um, you know, I, you know my, um, with the new practice that I have, the person who's going to be, um, you know, who's helping me, you know, with the, um, uh, who is the office ad, you know, administrator, I train her. You know, from, you know, from doing knowing nothing in dentistry and I'm training her to do all these different aspects of dentistry and she can I can let her, you know, let her do all of the work. And then I have the assistants, you know, um, the new assistant that I have, I'm training her also to, you know, is, um, you know, I didn't hire someone with experience. It's just someone that I teach, you know, from the ground up and then, you know, train them to be, you know, to do what I like them to do. And, you know, coaching, you know, leading and coaching. And, you know, the one thing I require from my staff is that they have to be coachable. So I know we're running out of time, but it's, you know, it's just, it's, it's a pleasure to speak to you. Well, Ryan, tell me, I have a two o'clock appointment. I got to run Okay. To. Thank All you right. so much. I look so forward to your online C course. Ryan, I will. Thank, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.